Okay. Make sure I keep get all the bells and whistles taken care of. Yeah. Hopefully I can learn how to do all of this too. Eventually yeah, I, I'll get there. You know, it's just knowing which buttons to push when. That's that's how I look at it and it makes it simpler. So let me make sure we're live in the Facebook group. Okay, we're live. Okay. Ready to go? I am. Okay. Hi, this is Tim and I wanna welcome those of you who are watching in the uh, Do More With Content Facebook group. I have Teresa Murphy with me today and Teresa, it's good to have you here. Thanks, hi everybody. And I want to congratulate her for uh, stepping up to um, map her dreams out and also for allowing you guys to watch this uh, process unfold. So just a few uh, housekeeping rules before we begin. Uh, this is Teresa's mapping session. So she and I are gonna be having the conversation back and forth. You're welcome to watch. You're welcome to comment. And you can ask questions in the, the chat you know, on Facebook, but we won't be addressing those. Those are there so that after the mapping session is over, Teresa can go back and look at that. And maybe you'll have some ideas that you can um, help her out with. So um, that's kind of why one of the reasons I wanted to do this because it really the power of the mastermind when you have a group of people and you might see something that the, the two of us don't see in this uh, mind mapping session. So uh, buckle up. I think we're going to have a good time with this. So you ready to go, Teresa? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So you should be, I can, I'm looking at my phone here and I see that the mind map is on the screen in Facebook. And so Teresa can see it as well. And I will, uh, I'm not going to be as I'm, I've mentioned to uh, in other sessions, I'm not gonna be going into the nuts and bolts of the software. I'll make a, an announcement about that in the, the comments later, if you wanna learn how to use this software, but that's not the, the intent of this. The intent of this is to map out these uh, ideas and these dreams for Teresa. So what we're gonna do, let me, I did mention to, to Teresa that allergies have kicked in on me, so I might have to mute myself. I don't want to cough in, in her face here in the headphones and stuff. I know that can be irritating. So if oh, I mute no myself, worries. that's what's going on. What we're going to do is we're going to start with a brain dump. And prior to uh, this call, I sent Teresa some prompts based on the dormant dreams of yesterday. And this was, and I'll explain a little bit more about what you're looking at here, but I wanted her to reflect back on things that she has always wanted to do that maybe she put on hold or life got in the way and she couldn't do them or things she has realized that she wanted to do, at, you know, later on that she never did even considered. So that was what she's been working on. And she has a list of things and uh, we'll start with that. And then we're gonna flesh out some other ideas here, but I'm gonna be coming back to uh, this list here as we build out um, what her dreams are. And then we will uh, take one of these and build it out and show you a system and what it can become. So does that sound good, Teresa? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. Now, I've broken this down into professional and personal dreams. And so uh, what are some of the things that you would like to do? I, I kind of have an idea from some of the emails we've had going back and forth, but just share with me some of these person, professional dreams that you would like to, to realize. And I'm gonna start populating this mind map. And I will say this, I'm not a typist, so this is going to be the slowest part is me populating this, but I will hunt and peck as fast as I can. Okay. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> okay. My husband's the same way. <laughs> okay. Um, so, I mean, professional dreams is uh, what I assume is your job, what you want to do, 
as far as your work goes. Uh, and I've been in the healthcare field for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of want to go in a completely different direction. I, I've done a complete career change uh, by going back to school and going into design. So that's kind of where I want to go is doing some sort of design work. And um, I know that's fairly broad scale. And that's kind of where I run into problems because there's so many design options out there. I can't narrow it down. The, the one thing I have narrowed down is I want to work for myself. I don't want to work for someone else anymore. So I want to start my own business. Um, I've helped my husband start his business and he's been doing that for 20 years now. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I, I kind of have a little bit of idea how to do it. It's just that I have to make that jump. Uh, so quitting my actual real job is, is a dream that I, I would like, but I don't know how to get there as well. Um, well, as far as the, des the design work, what, what are some of the things that you would you've thought about with design work. I think I know some of them just from the emails, but tell, talk about that a little bit more. Um, so, you know, a little bit of carpentry background with my dad. So I kind of like to do interiors, interior design work, um, maybe build my own uh, furniture, maybe not furniture, but just design or build small things the the thing I had come up with was the bedrooms because I tried to narrow it down to something that I could build kitchens and baths were in there but that's something that I can't really that's too much I want to be able to do the work at home I could design headboards bedrooms at home so I kind of would like to actually build and design an entire bedroom, do the design work on the headboards, do a chandelier, do a kit for, for people to join my group, do it maybe over Zoom where I send out a kit and people join me and we work on this chandelier, this beautiful chandelier, you get to make it in whatever colors you want, um, but we do it over Zoom where I'm still here at home. So something like that, is what I have in mind. Um, and I've narrowed it down from the made to do list and the, the TLC workshops and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Uh, so and if anybody has any ideas or, you know, input, that would be great. Okay. But that's kind of where I've narrowed it down to. Okay. Okay. Now, I know you said you have been in the healthcare business. The health healthcare profession, and you you switched now to design work. Uh, was there anything in the healthcare profession that you did that you would like to bring over to design work? I mean, we were so I work in ultrasound, so we're doing a lot of artwork. You know, basically it's art. We're taking pictures. We're taking pictures of babies. Where they're black and white two D pictures. You know, uh, I did abdomen, OB, all of that is sort of science and art mixed together. Uh, it's just that it's gotten kind of depressing over the years with seeing so many people, you know, getting sick and it's just hard to take care of people that for this long. Mm -hmm. So I kind of want to go toward the art, you know. That's interesting how you said that because, um, when I was a senior in high school, I didn't know what I was going to do. And my dad says, well, you're, you're good at math and you're good at art. Maybe it's architecture, <laughs> you know, there you go. and for an 18 year old kid, you go, well, that sounds kind of cool. And so I, I took a, a day trip up to Ball State University, which is in central Indiana. That is the state school for architecture. And I remember walking into the the main building for the, 
the school of architecture. And as soon as I saw the drawings, I was hooked. Yeah. Because they just mesmerized me. Yeah. And, you know, little did I know six years later, I would actually be doing that. You know? Yeah. And that's part of what I'd like to do too, is that with the built environment, draw, draw these beautiful buildings. That's, that's all part of it. I need to, I want to learn how to draw better and get better with SketchUp after taking the interior design classes. So yeah, it's all, it's all trying to blend it all together and figure out what you want to do. It's not that easy. Mm -hmm. and, so, and some of you might not realize this, but uh, when Teresa was telling me some of the things she wanted to do, I said, this is, there's a reason that the two of us are talking because I used to be an architectural illustrator. I guess I still am. I'm just not practicing it, but I, I did that for 27 years. And then I remember, I don't know where it was, if it was one of your Instagram posts or a Facebook post, but I saw a, a picture of a model. It, it had to be, I said, that's SketchUp. Yeah. Yeah. It was SketchUp. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm, I'm trying to get better at it, but you know, I'm working full time and it's just limited time to, to work on the software program and get better at it. Yeah. But it's fairly easy to do just one wall. And so I figured, oh, bedrooms, I could do just one wall, <laughs> show people. <laughs> Wait yeah. a minute. I could draw that. I want to draw that. Yeah. And your work is beautiful. Oh my gosh. I, I did one house at, at school and it, it wasn't even close to what, what you've done. It is beautiful. Well, thanks. It, you know, I had several years to, to hone those skills. So, um, but I do appreciate that. You, you've got the, you've got the background and I like the science and art combination because that's really what the, the design field is when you get into from design to the conceptualization of it, that's science and art combined. So um, I'm gonna put, we'll put conceptual work too. If I can type. Okay. Is there anything else that you can see professional dreams that you would like to pursue so we've started with design work here but is there another category of this that you might I mean to pursue barns are my passion I love the big old architectural design of the, the old barns so I mean there's not much you can do with the old barns other than you know try and restore them and keep them standing because uh, you just don't see the old architecture anymore. So I'd, I'd love to get involved in something like that, but I can't see that being a profession here at home. Uh, there's, you know, where is home? For you? Home is uh, Metamora, Michigan. Okay. Is, are there, I know in Indiana, I can look out my window because I'm in farm country and I can see old barns out my window. Oh yeah. I, they're, I, they're everywhere. Yeah. Are they everywhere up by you or? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is uh, known as horse country. So there's a lot of horse farms. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm not a fan of horses. <laughs> oh, well then I will <laughs> to be just... honest with you, but I, <laughs> we do have a rescue farm and we've had, you know, sheep and, chickens and turkeys and we've got everything on this 10 acres you can imagine <laughs> mm -hmm. okay cool there okay i'm seeing some connections here and i'm not going to elaborate any more on that yet but i'm starting to see some connections we can build off of what about any more professional dreams gosh you've got quite a few here yeah no i think that's it i don't I don't okay. think there's anything else. Now, uh, personal dreams. I know self-employed. I, I kind of put that in both categories, but are there any other personal dreams that you would like to? Not real. I mean, what I'd like to do is personally leave my job, but mm -hmm. I don't know if that's in there. Uh, 
you know, I would, I would always like to, um, you know, get better as far as my health and, and exercise. I would like to hike the Grand Canyon. I think that would be something fun to do. I have always wanted to go to Alaska and hike out there somewhere, but you know, those are, um, things that you'd probably have to get into shape for. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, maybe get in better shape and then do that. Uh, I enjoy line dancing. So I want to get back to doing that because of COVID. We haven't done that in our group, but, you know, maybe teach some line dancing. Okay. I don't know. Okay. There, it's going to be interesting as we start to, to develop this to see if, if some of these uh, personal dreams cannot can also be used to do the professional stuff and i'm going to pivot here just for a second and show you um one of my mind maps that i've been building out i don't know are you've been you follow me on instagram right uh yeah and so, you know, I've been doing these videos every day for, I guess today is the day 94, 95, I forget which. Oh, you're almost there. Yeah. Uh, I started you. back in June and I had this 100 day challenge that I'm doing with some other people. And uh, Leanne, who is also in this group, she's the one who's, who started the challenge, which bless her heart, that got me motivated to do this. So I've been doing this 100 day challenge. And wow. here is... This is my mind map. Oh my gosh. And basically what I did was I've numbered every day and I work on these videos. I, I built out an acronym. So this is the current one I'm working on. It's I'm using the word journal and I did a word scramble for this. But anyway, I'll start with the night before I know what letter I'm going to do. And so then for the word journal it was the letter U, unplug to unlock mental blocks. So that's what I talked about. Okay. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Now, the reason I show this is because one of the each one of these videos has been recorded outside while I walk. Oh yeah. So I'm getting my steps in for the day, getting healthier. I've lost some weight during this process too. So that's wow. where. I knew that if I could add the walking to this process, I would kill two birds with one stone. I get my steps in, I get to walk with my dogs, I get to record these videos and it's a win-win for me. So like this is, these are all the acronyms that I've done, all these topics. Oh my gosh. And they're all, it's all numbered. And so uh, I have, today is the last day for the word journal. And then tomorrow I'll wrap up. I have six days, I guess, left to go. Six days and I'm going to use the word system. And so that's what I know what's coming up. But uh, that's, the, that's the power of the mind map because you can start to track and anticipate what you're going to do. And so really this, my system is using these acronyms. So you can, you can see like here, here was peace. And I brought that in already. Oh, no, no, it's not peace excuse me, dreams. These are the dreams. And these are things that I've talked about in that sequence. Okay. So I knew on day 30, I did D and so forth. Anyway, this is how you can start to build a system with your mind map. And so let's, let's get back to your mind map and see how we can do that. Okay. Wow. So it, it, it will build something out similar to this. Yeah. And I see that you're doing a legacy and that's something that's interesting because I would like to have better communication with my kids and better understanding. And, you know, that's always a personal goal. And that legacy that you're creating those videos is, is mm -hmm. really awesome to do that for your kids. Um, yeah, thanks. yeah, that was part of the, that, that's the, that's my why was to create content that they could look back on. And I talked about that in some of these videos, but let's put that over here for you for 
you want a legacy here. So oh sure. Who who wouldn't want their kids to and even for my mom, I'd like to create something like that so I could have her on video. It's just convincing her. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh yeah, because I think COVID has kind of made people <clears throat> realize how important their family is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember when it first started, um, we kept out of safety precautions, you know, we kept away from my mother. And I remember one day uh, we were talking to her, said, Mom, we're going to uh, have a weenie roast outside. And so we we built a little fire and we roasted hot dogs and she drove up to the house and you know we handed it to her from a distance but she took a hot dog and went home but you know she said that was the best tasting hot dog because she got to see us and then you know she had something different than just what she had been eating for herself at the house so oh that's great it's kind of a fun little story so yeah things like that you start to appreciate a little more when you get into these extreme situations we've been in yeah so let's go over here because i think we can work on this some of these are going to apply but looking here let's see let me just move a couple of things around is there one thing that really stands out to you that in this list that you really really have a draw to Um, I mean, the old barns, I just love, but I just don't see doing anything with that. But I, I do like the architecture and the idea of, of working on the bedrooms for people and the headboards, because I feel like I can do that here mm -hmm. and, um, show people how to do the upholstery and then help them pick out their fabric if they want. Or, or even just make the stuff here and then see if someone's interested in, in buying it. So that would be like, a, you know, maybe an Etsy store or something like that. Um, the custom work and working with someone just really scares me mm -hmm. um, because I, I would love to show them how to do it, but to actually like, work with one-to-one -one on someone and go out and pick out their fabric. I'd love to do it. But the problem is, is that, you know, what happens when they don't like this and you've already bought it. And I, you know, don't want to deal with negative stuff. I'm all like positive <laughs> mm -hmm. after being in the healthcare. I don't want to do any negativity. I want to do positive. So if I already make it and then sell it, they buy what they, what they get, if they like it buy it if they don't like it don't buy it you know what I mean it's mm -hmm. kind of like um some stuff like that like teaching people showing people how to do that how to do it themselves I could help them pick okay. out fabric okay. and they can do it themselves stuff like that like just something design that I can work on here okay um, okay I'm seeing some things here that uh some definite possibilities so I want to collapse this for a second. And I just want to bring this dreams acronym up. So these, we've talked about the dormant dreams, things that you've wanted to do that you haven't done yet. Have you had any regrets? I mean, who hasn't? Don't, okay. sometimes you feel like you're just wasting your time. Okay. You know, like, like my job right now. I feel like I'm just kind of wasting my time mm -hmm. doing that because I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. Oh, I understand. <laughs> um, and I I don't want to make it seem harsh, but um, you know, you regret like not having more kids, mm -hmm. and then you you know you regret um, not spending enough time with your kids or your family. How could you spend more time if you had? more kids you can't even spend time with these the two that you have you know i mean being afraid you don't want to live with fear you know mm -hmm. and so you regret you know not doing things um altogether because of fear like leaving your job okay. um 
let's see, what did I write down? Not spending time with family, you're too busy. Just, yeah. Okay. The reason I asked this, and I don't remember if you saw that video or not, but I combined regrets and those feelings and the the thing I'd encourage to do and you've done with the this already is you've written this down and by writing it down you're touching those feelings and so what the the next thing was the emotional embers of your unrealized dreams that if you take those those dreams you haven't realized yet and there's still sparks that light you up okay if you've combine that with the right fuel in other words if you combine it with i don't want to have those feelings of regret anymore that can motivate you to say okay whatever it takes i'm going to start to realize these dreams and so that's a that's one part of the exercise that we aren't going to uh, dig a lot into it but the fact you you realize some things that you don't want to have happen anymore in your life and you have those things that you really are lit up with, combine those two together and that can serve as motivation to push forward. So I just wanted to show those two sections. The next one was look in the attic of your mind. And you've kind of done this already, but I wanted, wanted to just throw this out there because I wanna make sure you've turned over every rock and you've looked behind, you know, under things and you know, whether it's a literal attic that you go and look through old scrapbooks or yearbooks or whatever, or if it's just you think back to, you know, what really excited me when I was a little kid. If there's something like that, then those would be things that you can add to your list. So if anything like that comes up, we can put it into the map. Or if you want to think about that, uh, I just wanted to Want to make sure mm. that you, you you don't leave anything unlooked at. Um, I mean, I I always see the garden and being outside and working in the yard in the garden and working with the flowers and stuff like that too. But okay. um, but I do have that now. I finally built my own fence. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> to keep the deer out, so I could go out there and actually have flowers. Okay. Um, yeah, I was pretty determined to finally have some flowers in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to put that in here. And this was a, my little trick when the my map starts to give me a little hiccup. That's I just have to switch to a different map real quick. I'm just going to put flowers. Yeah, yeah, everybody's got, you know, you have to get out there and get yourself dirty once in a while, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, dig, well, that's the sign work too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll we'll leave that for now. But um, what I want to do next is I want to pull one of these things out and build it out for you. And from what I've heard you talk, would you mind if we pulled the barns out because I've got some ideas? Absolutely, that's one of my favorites. Okay, so let's pull that out. And what we're going to do is i'm going to make this a little bit smaller tell me if this is too small for you is that too small no that's good okay so let me go over here and we'll bring this oh oops get over here get it up there i'm just moving stuff around here now all this other stuff is going to stay in here so don't worry, it's not going anywhere. I'm just going to start to bring something over here. Barnes restoration. But I want also to keep keep this other stuff. I'm going to put personal dreams over here so we have a little more room to work. You say there are a lot of barns uh, around you, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Are have you ever watched any of those uh, shows where they restore old barns? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, are there barns that are in such bad shape that they need to come down? Some of them do. Yeah. Okay. You, 
you uh, don't want to do that. If you don't have to, I don't. I'd like to see them standing because it's, it's all the old carpentry, all the old uh, putting the beams together. You know, it's it's a profession that isn't around anymore. Okay. Um, but if the wood's rotten, you know, you have to. You have to. Okay. Well, what I'm thinking is maybe there's a way to repurpose old barns that maybe give them a second life. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Okay. That as you give them a second life, maybe they aren't going to be for animals or crops anymore. Maybe they're going to be used for something else. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. For weddings. And yeah. For get togethers, for parties. Okay. So let's, let's look at that a little bit. Let's see. Let me. So it could be for weddings. Or just be like a venues. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so it could be weddings. It could be parties. Just whatever it, you know, it can become those things. Now, with your new career as a designer, would you feel comfortable in, say, maybe buying a, a barn like that? either having it relocated or do something where you could work with the owner and, you know, build a venue. Would that be something you would might consider? Oh, absolutely. I would love to do that. Okay. So you might, you might have ownership. that you can then turn these into venues for weddings and parties, okay? That's with using a, an existing barn and whether you relocate it, you know, whatever you do, okay? But that's, yeah. that's an option to keep the, the building in, intact yeah. that you could do things with, okay? Yeah, that would be cool. Okay. Now, for barns that, uh, let's see, I'll just put salvage. Because you're trying to repurpose, give them second life. If you could salvage materials from old barns. Yep. Okay, I saw something over here. Let's see, let me flip this over. Go back. You're good at carpentry. And I think in one of the emails you said your dad taught you, right? Mm hmm Okay. Now what's what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna start bringing things out of here and putting it in a different order. So <laughs> interior design, that applies to an old, older barn okay yeah but interior design can be here okay let's collapse that so what would it look like if you were to go around this your area your county your state or whatever and find barns that just they need to come down they just are too dilapidated but there's enough materials in there and with your carpentry carpentry skills could you turn old barns into headboards for bedrooms absolutely okay so carpentry or um maybe you could turn turn the, the salvage material into kits. 
Oh, sure. And use your design skills that you've, you're, you've acquired to start to build new life into the, this old material. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, in order to do that, you know, and you've got the carpentry skills, so you can start, you can start building these things out on your own. And then maybe you had, let's say you bought an old barn and let's just do it this way. Um, yeah, I would love to do that. Yeah, there's a whole lot to that. How would you? Well, this is your showroom. Yeah. You'd have to uh, find a place to put it. Yeah. So this is your showroom where you could you could illustrate your interior design skills. So you could have different headboards. You know, it just you say you could do a wall and you have the headboard, you could just show them different layouts. And so people could come in and see the different headboards that you design. And then, you know, that this could be your showroom where you sell to and you you meet with clients. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't that be cool? Oh, my God. Okay. Now, the other thing you can do, say you didn't have, uh, at least at first, you didn't have an old barn to, to buy and start doing this with. But do you have like a garage or something you could do your carpentry work in? Oh, yeah. The, we just got that worked out. Yep, I got some stuff in there and I got down here kind of in the basement worked. Okay, garage. Worked out to where I can do some stuff. Basement. So that's where you could do your, um, I'm just going to copy this. You could do it over here too. Well, I yep. should, I should, let me don't do it that way. Let's, let's put, let's move this in here. That's one option and I'll collapse it. And we'll paste it in here too. Okay. And instead of having an old barn, at least maybe right off the bat, what if you had a virtual environment? You know where I'm going mm -hmm. with this? I'm not sure what you mean by a virtual barn. Oh, Sketch build us. Oh, yeah, now, I guess I could. Okay, I'm going to do something dangerous here. Oh, no. And I, I'm going to launch it and see what happens. I haven't been in the program for a while. Um, but this is something that you know we can talk about later if you're interested. Oh, the, uh, the SketchUp. Uh, oh, yeah. Maybe they have some stuff in there. They probably do have some. Oh, uh, well, see how this is going to work with Zoom and everything. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. I mean, um, it's been a while, okay? Yeah, yeah. No, I keep, I don't know if I could even do that that fast. <laughs> oh, when, when I was, when I was doing this a lot, um, I can make this thing sing. Yeah. Okay. There's your wall. Okay. And I'm going to group that and I'm going to put in. Hey, you're faster at it than I am. And I've been doing it for a while. But, you know, if that was a headboard, and I don't know what the scale is on this. I haven't tried to measure it or anything. Right. But, but you know, you can, you can literally, um, and this gets, you can actually superimpose your, your designs in SketchUp and you can, you know, spin it around, let people see what it's going to do. Oh yeah, absolutely. So you could have a built environment, a virtually a virtual built environment where you can showcase your stuff. Right. Yeah. 
So that's yeah, an that's option. what I would like to do. Yeah. Yep. You know, and you can do your design work with this program too. Yeah. So yeah. It it's just I don't know. That this was the I was taught the manual way to do perspectives. And yeah. When I when the computers first started doing the 3D stuff, I remember um some of the architects said, Oh, now we can do this, do it ourselves, but they didn't know they didn't understand some of the concepts of perspective. And they were just pushing yeah. buttons. And I told my boss, I said, they don't know what they're doing. They're distorting this stuff. And so um, I got into the software. I said, oh, this software is really, really cool. It can do some really neat things. And yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it can. You yeah, can. and that's the, um, the thing that some of the things that I got to learn on how to do. But I do have several headboards that I hand drew and then I took that and put it up in SketchUp mm -hmm. um, just as a, a mock-up just so that when I start doing samples, you know, because I want to start building them and just getting them built. Mm -hmm. and that's where I, I think I want to go. Okay. Just, get them, just get them built and get, get some samples built. You can build something like this. This is an old model I did for um, a museum in Louisville. And oh. we were, we um, graph would be assembled. Um, but it was, so you can, you can add graphics to the walls. Yeah. 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 You, know. you can, that's and, cool. Just so. pop, pop a picture up there and. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So anyway, you could do something like that with um sketch up so that you could have a virtual environment yeah yeah with the i wonder how i could do that to make it look like i could do an old barn setup like that and yeah mm -hmm. and or you actually know actually propose it to somebody um when we take the if we take a old barn down mm -hmm. and repurpose it mm -hmm. yeah and the thing is it could be something like that uh, and then with photography uh, you can in a website you could be selling this stuff so that's the idea is to then maybe you you start out by salvaging old barn material deciding the, the boards and or i know there's some really cool the way they used to join the the uh the timbers together if you could yeah incorporate some of that too uh you could you could be known for those kinds of headboards you know so that might be something to to look into to look into yeah. yeah i do have a bunch of wood out in the back that we got off of an auction site mm -hmm. um some of them you do, you have to really look them over and make sure they're not twisted and turned and they have rusty old nails in them and mm -hmm. all of that. Yeah, you have to be kind of careful, but yeah, get started. Just come up with a couple of designs and just do it. That's what mm -hmm. I should do. Yeah. Well, I, and since you know this stuff real well, maybe you do have kits that you could generate. You have a few different designs. Mm -hmm. And then by doing those kits, then uh, you could sell kits to to people if they want to do it themselves. Maybe it's maybe you do all the the carpentry work and they basically take it home and assemble it themselves. Yeah, that type of thing. Or you maybe I don't know if you want to get into where you you do installations or not. Um, yeah, I mean, I could. I don't mind doing that mm -hmm. basically just what i'd like to do is hang them on the wall i don't really want to build the whole bed you know mm -hmm. but um just the headboards you could just hang on the wall and you okay. could design the whole so this is the idea you walk in the bedroom and it's like your accent wall you create this beautiful headboard and it's like wow you walk in the room it's like your cozy little environment right there uh-huh Okay. Because that's the first thing you see is your 
wall, your headboard, you know, so that's your huge accent wall. So that would go right on the wall itself. Um, and that's easy. Just find the studs, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. You just have to make sure that structurally the structurally isn't the integrity is there to, to hold it up, but that shouldn't be, shouldn't be a problem. So, well, that could start to, that could start to be how you, you do this and you could do the, the virtual environment with SketchUp, or you could do your design work. You know, before you start hammering nails, you can start to do that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's what, um, one of the things we used to do is we would build kitchen sets. And a lot of the, the kitchens you see in magazines, those aren't real kitchens. Some of them are, but a lot of times those are sets that are built. Oh, okay. And I used to do the, the, uh, the models for those. And what it allowed us to do is I knew where the camera was going to be set up. And so I only focused on what needed to be built and told the carpenters to say, okay, if you go so many feet this way and so many feet this way and build that much, that's all you need to build because that's where we're going to get the shot. Oh, and gotcha. So, you know, that's what, the, that's the power of SketchUp that you can use, mm -hmm. you know, and so you could start to, to do things like that and, and you know, build out these ideas. And if somebody has a uh, whatever size room, I don't know, 12 feet by, I don't know, you, you know, the room sizes that people would have, and you can start to, to show them ahead of time where you say, okay, if you have, let's put this in here. Um, you could do design work. That's your um, interior design. Yeah where you could actually give them an idea if this headboard would fit in their room. Yeah. Know, that type of thing. Yeah. So um, does something like that seem plausible to you? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I just need to get some samples and just get to it. Okay. That's where mm -hmm. the next phase of this comes in. Oops. Uh, let me do this. Because what you want to start to do is you want to start um, developing a system here. And this mind map can, you can move things around. You're seeing how I move stuff around. You can move stuff around so that it makes sense. But you can start to now identify, okay, what do I need to do first, second, third, fourth, fifth? And you can take this out as far as you need to go with it. But you can start to look at this now and say, okay, if I was going to um, work with these old barns, uh, I think you said already you have some materials. Yeah. So you could start there and then you could start doing some sketches. You could start making some prototypes. Okay. Yep. So let's just, I'm just going to put a few things in here and uh, you get this mind map afterwards um, and you can start to start to move things around and populate it however you need. So materials, prototypes. Um, yeah, some samples. That's what yeah. I really, I have to get started with. So, you know, you get your prototypes and you start posting them on social media, like on Instagram. Yeah. And it seems that Pinterest is a good one for a lot of uh, interior design, you know, product stuff. Mm -hmm. I'll have to, I don't even think I have a account with them, but that would be a good place to start posting yeah, pictures. Yeah. That'd be perfect. So you start to, to, to do an inventory of what materials you have, and then you start, let's do this. Let's move that down there. See how easy it is to move stuff around? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, if, that make, if this order makes sense, great. If it doesn't, you know, switch it up. But you just start to go through here and you start to say, okay, what do I need to do? I need to do some assessment on my materials, do some design work, do some prototyping, then start 
pasting some things up or posting them in different uh, social places, then you can start to get some interest and see what people want. Yeah. Now, how does yeah. this, how does this necessarily, let's, where's the uh, personal? Let's bring that back over here a second. Okay, this, this would allow you to be self-employed and leave your job. And then health-wise, you know, to, to me, I think a lot of the fun and this would be the discovery of these old barns. Yeah. So whether you, you're, you're traveling to those places and walking around, I don't know, it just being out yeah. a lot. You know, yeah, that that's the fun part, right? Mm -hmm. The you know, hay lofts climbing up there. Oh yeah, wouldn't that and, be fun? And then you know your legacy for your children and your mother. You know, you, you can design you know headboards for their homes. You know, I don't, how old are your children? Yeah, uh, twenty eight and thirty. Okay, crazy. So. Uh, that map, those shows how the, some of the personal dreams could start to filter in and start to be realized while you're doing all this other stuff here with, with one of these ideas. This is the barns, okay? Uh -huh. So we collapse the barns. You still have these other things you could be working with. Um, you could be doing your chandeliers. I mean, maybe the chandeliers... I'm thinking on that one, maybe you if you're going with the barns siding for the headboards, maybe you find some old farm implements or something like that, or wrought iron or things that you could build chandeliers out of, you know, repurpose it again. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what kind of yeah. chandeliers you're talking about, but that seam would fit the decor of a, a barn yeah. type headboard. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to work and throw that around and see what I can come up with. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I just picture it's this vision of the bedroom, you know, walking in and it's really cool what you've designed on the wall, the accent wall and the really, you know, beautiful chandelier right there. You know, that's just like, you know, perfect, ready to go to bed now. It's cozy. Mm -hmm. so, Okay. What does this, are, are you starting to see a way to, yeah, to build this out? Yeah. Yeah. I, I really wasn't thinking about the old barns and the old, the old wood, but that lights me up a little bit more than what I was thinking. Um, and maybe that's why I haven't gotten started because I just like, I just was like not really lit up and, you know, taking my time to actually do it because I'm busy working. And so I just was like, well, I don't know if I want to do this if I can't go all in. Right. Mm -hmm. But the burns, it does, it kind of lights me up. It kind of gets me excited to go find some. So yeah, knocking on the doors and starting to talk to people about their burn. <laughs> well, yeah, that could be pretty exciting because I yeah. can see you know, this, the first one we really built out was you having it on site at your place. Yeah. But, th but then you start to open this other idea up to where maybe you have your interior design stores, an old barn that you've uh, repurposed and you've uh, refurbished. And then you just take all your, your bedroom stuff into there and you, yeah. that's your showroom. Yeah. Yeah. That would, that would be awesome. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that would be my complete dream vision come true. If I could yeah. do something like that, that would be a beautiful day in the life. <laughs> well, and, and you, you know, think about it too. If you're hosting the weddings there too. Oh yeah. That would be fun. You know, host a wedding, selling my headboard. I mean, that could be 
I don't know. There's a lot of possibilities here. Yeah. That I think that I think play off of your love of these barns and your your love for carpentry and and design work. So yeah, um, this could be a lot of fun. And yeah. That's, that's the key is to have fun with it. I know, right? That's what you want. Mm -hmm. You want to get up and be excited about what you're going to do. Right. Right. Would you have any questions on this? Um, no, but this has opened up a lot of eyes, Tim. I appreciate it. Okay. Well, I mean, there's some other things we can move around here if you if you would like. I mean, I want to make sure you you're comfortable with how this works. And if you have any questions like that, just fire yeah. away. And I'll be glad to answer them. I just have to basically decide where to start. Okay. Um, so your steps. Yeah. So the steps would be the materials and the design work ahead of time, come up with some ideas. Maybe just start with um, researching all the barns in this area and the people that own them and just start talking to people. Okay. Let's make a list it. here. Let's, let's just make you a list here for things and we can move this around. So researching barns in the area yeah and then we'll put these in the things what other steps can you see mm. i can see me driving around and just really looking for something interesting um yeah somebody that might be interested in tearing it down or gosh, I don't know. Now I'm thinking, now you've got me thinking, well, I need property <laughs> to put a barn on. <laughs> <laughs> well, that might be down the road. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's a goal that another dream you have is at one oh time I gosh. want, I want some property, you know? Yeah. That could be kind of fun. That would um, be really fun. I'm going to put one on here. Researching you know, Pinterest, because you might see some things that are out there already. You know, you'll do your own thing, of course, but you might see what's out there. And, you know, you start to build those vision boards for yeah. people, Pinterest boards, I guess I should say there. Yeah. But, um, that's probably your, it, well, while Instagram is very visual, Pinterest more so. And yeah. So, um, yeah. What about, uh, I think I saw this, uh, one of the suggestions came up. Yeah, collect and document uh, stories about the barns. So, you know, if you could tell stories about these and yeah, this, this could really be a, a, a game changer is that if there was a, a particular barn that had to come down for whatever reason, and there was a story about that family that owned that barn. That could be kind of cool to tell that story. So each headboard has its own story. Oh, you know? that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. And so um, what I want you to think about with this is that a lot of, a lot of how you present this is going to be visual, of course. Yeah. It's a visual medium to especially with design work, but if you can t insert a story with it too, some written and or video, let's just do this. Um, uh, written, uh, oral, uh, video. So it could be, you know, like just um, interviews you get from uh, people who own these barns. Um, so they could turn this could turn into blog posts and videos and all of that when you tell the story behind you know what you're doing with the, the material from these uh, these buildings. I don't know the, the whole idea that you're giving giving this barn a new life, a new mm -hmm. lease on life, that's going to be uh, appealing to a lot of people too. Yeah, yeah, giving back and repurposing is is pretty huge mm -hmm. so i think that 
that will a lot of people will see you doing that i mean it's not like you just bought a bunch of lumber and set it outside till it weathered now this is the the real deal you know, mm -hmm. you know some of these barns are decades if not a couple of centuries old probably so oh i'm gonna have to go find a barn person or group of people that yeah that does that for a living Mm -hmm. and join them and that's where i'm going to make my money is they're going to pay me to help them take the barns down <laughs> <laughs> well you uh, know there you might trade out to start with you know you design a headboard for somebody i, I need some materials um i know i've watched some of those shows yeah and, yeah and i don't know what they seem to be based out of kentucky tennessee area right now that i've seen yeah um, yeah i know there are a lot of barns in those two states but yeah you could probably uh find some contacts along those lines and then um you know i was driving where was i yesterday i was driving by some place the other day and they had old log cabins that they had obviously taken down from some place and they they had like a lot that you could just go pick out a log cabin and they were oh. they were old wow so you know you, you get the you get the timbers and then they'll bring them in and assemble them on your property but the same same huh. deal could happen with barns too so yeah but you know the whole thing is you're taking just a few pieces to make these headboards so you don't need a whole lot of material right and yeah. so one one barn could probably supply you for a while depending yeah. on the the condition of it well and it's it's big right now i mean people are selling all of the the old lumber mm -hmm. uh but a lot of times you don't know you know where it was from or the stories behind it but you could get it you know almost anywhere and but it is a big price for a lot of the old wood mm -hmm. um, yeah Okay. Well, yeah. And you, so you just start identifying these steps and then you start moving around, moving them into, you know, what needs to come first, second, third, fourth, and so, so forth. And you just, that's how it works. And so basically what the mind map is allowing you to do is it's allowing you to systematize your dream. Yeah. And in my, when I was doing the mind map, well, I guess it was on here too over here on dreams the last one was systematize your dreams so you're oh. putting you're putting these ideas of your dream here and so you're getting them into some kind of a format so you know what you need to do first second third and you just take the next small step gotcha. and you start to realize these yeah yeah and it might be a little step every day like you said mm -hmm. just make it a challenge like like that 100 days maybe identify an old barn identify property identify yeah and then one leads to another leads to another if you just keep at it like that every day mm -hmm. i need to go to sketch up school too <laughs> well get better i if you get if you get to that point let me talk to you about that because um there there are some there are some tried and true ways to to use sketch up to your advantage and you can once you get used to it as yeah. i was saying i used to build foam core models and yeah so when i saw this i said i learned with a pink pearl eraser to draft and you know that's one of the tools in sketchup you know the uh -huh. the, inter the interface there's a protractor over here you know yeah uh, there's a protractor there's a tape measure i said this is what i was taught with you know there's yeah. your pink pearl eraser and there's your pencil and so i said i this is just this was made for me this this software and so i yeah. I've, I've loved it so if you get to that point let me know we can we yeah. can talk about that but anyway yeah. Yeah, it's fun. I'm getting better at it. Yeah. 
you can get to where when you're using SketchUp the way it's designed, your left hand is doing the keyboard shortcuts and your right hand's working the mouse. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it, it really is. I it's like play to me. So but um this this I'll, again I, this will give you an idea of where you can go and you know yeah. you can collapse these steps down you can you know see all this stuff over here yeah this has really got me excited now good good i think it's got a lot of potential really i mean it's pretty cool and so yeah but you know it, it all gets back to you know what your dad taught you about carpentry when you were little yeah you know yeah well and now I'm looking forward to going and finding an old barn because we used to climb up to the very top and then swing on the rope, you know, mm -hmm. and land in the, and we're three stories up when we were kids and, and uh, on the farm, <laughs> wouldn't that be fun? Mm -hmm. Well, you probably have a lot of stories you could tell. Reliving that, that's a yeah. riot. <laughs> well, you never know when you, if you get to where um, you're building your venues and stuff. Yeah, you know, maybe you can bring some of that back into it as well. So some of that play. Yeah, I know around here uh, we have a lot of Amish communities, and there's one. I know of at least two that have some uh, restaurants that they, you know, built. Good stuff, good cooking. So mm. you just never know what you might find, but. Um, this this has got some promise to it, so yeah. I'm glad I'm glad you're excited about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the way this will work, um, you'll have access to the recording. I'll, I'll give you the link to the Zoom call. Plus, it's also in the Facebook group, so you can watch it there. And then um, I will send you this mind map, and you can start playing around with it. Uh, I'll show you a a quick tip that's kind of nice. Um, I don't want you to ever think I'm going to break the mind map. <laughs> you know, you can watch this. You just, if you're on a Mac, it's command C. If you're on a PC, it's uh, control C. You copy this. Now watch. I just paste it over there. Oh, so okay. Typically like what I'll do is I'll paste something and then I'll, I'll play with this. And if I mess this up, I know I've got everything like it was over on, over on the left. So you can't break it if you, oh, know, if you okay, you know, and, and I'll have a copy of the of the mind map too. If you say, oh no, Tim, I lost it or whatever, just uh, I have a copy. I've got it on uh, Dropbox, and uh, so I'll have it. But that's one of the things I do is I copy stuff and just put put a copy off to the side, and then I play around with this, just move stuff around. And if I if I accidentally delete something, I can go, oh, I can just go get back and get it over here. Oh, OK. So. OK. But so you'll send me the link to get into this actual or. I'm going to send the, the mind map file is very small, so I will attach that to an email and send it to you. OK, but I'll also the um, the Zoom call, I'll send you the link. It'll be on the cloud. I don't know if there's if there's any. Um, time restriction on that i don't think there is mm. unless oh i don't know my, i'm not sure but anyway um we've got it i'll send you the link i think you can download it to your computer and then uh, it's also on the facebook group and i know there's been some people here watching this live with us so and there's been some comments i saw them out of the corner of my eye go oh back okay and, go back and watch the comments and then if anybody has watched this since you know at a later date and wants to comment please comment so Teresa can go back and see if you have some ideas because this was our brainstorming session together you probably saw some things that uh, we didn't catch and so that again that's the power of the mastermind yeah oh well thank you Tim well I'm thank excited. you I, really, I appreciate you doing this so uh any more questions or no I think I'm good okay great well let me uh now <laughs> <laughs> well let me know how it goes and, and post in the group let us know what you're doing um it's, this is going to be exciting to see how it, it uh, builds out so i'm going to um i'm going to stop the stream into facebook if you could hang on for a few minutes 
and then I'll stop the recording too. So just a second, let me stop the streaming to Facebook. So thanks okay. everyone for watching. Thanks everyone.